Hello everyone, welcome again to another video. Uh, we are going through sessions with Dr. Cheryl and so this is going to be a shorter session today because I was talking to another therapist and I was like, wait a second, I got to get back for this for you guys for this hour. Um, but a lot of my other videos have gone over like an hour and 20 minutes. So just this will blend in with that. Um, so today the the let's see what our theme our theme is don't think i don't know because god has been i i call it god has been preparing me for all this stuff now i cut my own bangs and so then i had to go to the hair cutter and he fixed it so, but now my bangs are really short so i keep doing this but i'll just let it go so just let it go always there's so many more important things going on in this world than than just what our outer appearance is in the moment. All right, so I was meditating this morning and um, I always tr do my best to use, I've been a psychologist for over 20 years, so I use my, and I went to graduate school for nine years and undergrad and grad school. So I use, do my best to use the skills and knowledge that I have as a psychologist and yet let the Holy Spirit lead uh, because then what you're, what you're talking about, what you're teaching is this, this anointed, this, um, I welcome all people. So if you don't know what this is, this might seem weird at first, but it's not, it's not weird at all. It's, it's understanding, it's recognizing that we are spiritual beings. And there's a man named Tilliard de Chardin, and he he was saying we're not we're not human human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having this human experience. We're in these physical bodies, and um, there's s stuff going on around us. If you haven't noticed, and within us, um, and so it's kind of like. Um, I know. Okay. So here's, I wrote some Greek words down for us today, but don't be intimidated by Greek. I took Greek for just two years in school. It's just like if you took two years of Spanish, you understand the basics of it. And then if you practice it afterwards. All right. And so, um, There's all these words. Let's let's just go through it. I made sure that this is my journal, but I only wrote I only wrote stuff that we could look at today. So um John 17, 17 is we're talking about it says, Sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word. That's the word logos right here in Greek. Thy thy word is the truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so. I have also sent them into the world, okay? And so, um, and for their, this is Jesus speaking, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself. That also might be, that they also might be sanctified in the truth. Wow, okay. This goes a lot with what my um, colleague and I were just talking about, actually. A lot of my videos, I have asked these questions. Do you know who you are? Who are you? Who are you? Um, and it seems like a really simple question. But if you think that you are just this physical person that lives for however many years, let's just say 100 because I like aiming big. But we, who knows? We could live for a lot longer than that in the future. is if if you have this perspective that you are created by uh, the, this absolute infinite beingness, this divine love over here behind all created things, you are created out of this idea of God, out of the love of God, then um, you 
have a different perspective than other people who only see this limited way. If you think, okay, let's say, let's understand this. So if you're bound by your brain or your egotism, and um, let's say you only think about how much money can I make, and it's just like, and you, um, and then, you know, when the stocks go up, you're happy. When the stocks go down, you're sad. When you've got more money in the bank, you're happy. When you don't, you're sad. It's like, you are so much more than something as superficial as that. But if you don't know that, if you're super connected, it's like, um, what is that verse? There's a Jesus, not just a verse, it's Jesus giving us eternal truths. When he says, you know, where your treasure, where your heart, where your treasure is, that there your heart will be also. Okay, that's the verse that's coming to me right now. It's like, I'm like, thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, so understand this because I know that there's a, there's a guy on one of the platforms that I'm on and I watch some of his videos and um, he's watched mine and we have this common understanding and I'm like, no, you're speaking the truth, but he's not calling himself a Christian right now. I think maybe he's Buddhist or something. I don't remember what he is calling himself that he is. And I don't know how our paths crossed, but they have, and we have this mutual respect for each other's um, content because now I never want to mislead people. I never want to lead people into something less than um, that will get them off track. But it's really important if two people understand that we are spiritual beings. This is what Taylor Dishard, and I don't know if I finished that quote. He says, we're not, yeah, I did. We're not physical beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience, like having, a, yeah. And so it's like, you are spirit. And once you understand that, imagine again, I use this example a lot, is like, if you were operating and looking at the world through the first floor of a building, and then it it's like 20, um, hold on, 20 floors up, whoa, um, that, let's say it's a building that's 20 floors up, you, you have this capacity, I'm just turning up the light a little bit on this, but I don't know, anyway, you have the capacity to go to the top of the building and look at all of life from that perspective. That's what happens when you recognize, when you start understanding. Even the word psychology, I've talked about this a lot in videos, is ology means the science of or the study of. The psyche is your soul. And so I, I embraced following the path of a psychologist because in a lot of ways the women uh, weren't welcomed to teach in churches and be pastors and stuff like that back in the day and so i'm like fine i'll study the science of the soul and get my doctorate that means my expertise you get your expertise in studying the ways of this and then you practice it and so um So when Jesus is talking here and he's saying, he's saying, he's about to go face the crucifixion and he's saying, sanctify them in thy truth. He's praying to God pretty much. Um, the And it says, thy word is truth, but the, it's the word logos. And so, um, but the word sanctify, okay, I wrote out the word sanctify over here. And it says, I'll just read it because... Only, I think I read 19% of the world speaks English, so I'm counting on the captions to show up in the correct way. I do my best to speak in normal words, not always slang more lately, so that it can um, translate well for other people, so you don't get weird random words. Um, sanctify to separate. Um, sanctify means to separate from the profane things and dedicate to God, to purify from sin, to renew the soul, to hallow. And it comes from the word, um, in, in Greek, it's um, to, it's, 
it, right here, it's, it, it starts with an A, but this is an H sound when you have this mark on the top of it. Hagiazo. And it, it's from this other Greek word, hagia. So if you think of like, there's, you already know a Greek word because the hagia sophia, it means, sophia means wisdom. And hagia means holy or set apart, the sanctifying sacredness. And so it's like, the holy wisdom that's the name of that place and sophia was like um a, a word that represented like lady wisdom if you've ever read boethius the consolation of philosophy it was written in about the late 400s a.d um, by a guy named boethius but lady wisdom comes and teaches him all these things about what happens if you chase after fame fame can be taken from you then who are you what are you um riches fortune can be taken from you it's capricious right and so then who are you what are you um your health you can have it and then it can go away and so it's like who are you apart from that um all these friends, they act like you're the, they're your friends when they can get something from you. Who are you apart from that? And what I'm talking about, I'm, I'm not just randomly saying words so we can just contemplate about something so we can think that we're talking about something important is what I'm teaching through these, I see now, like I didn't know always, but this is life and death. This is life and death for people. Even there's that verse that says, life and death is in the tongue. But look at what happens. And there's that verse, there's a verse, verse that says like, my word shall not return to me void. Whatever this word that goes out, it will come back to me in a way that is... Um, I'm hearing this psalm. I think it was Psalm either 121. I might have written down or, or 103. Hold on. Because it was talking about um, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I think it's 122. And that um, you are going to um, it's this verse about now this is mystical and symbolic but it's about bringing in the sheaves. It's like when you do this work, even if we talk about inner work, when you do the inner work of, of um, I mean, the word therapy in Greek is healing. So when you, let's make this really simple for a second. When you stop holding grudges towards other people that have harmed you, when you start forgiving, when you, um, one way to understand that is, is when we pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. When you take all the debts of other people, how they ought to have treated you with love, and you bring that up to God and you just say, this is all the debts of other people. Take this from me so I don't have to carry this. Your life becomes less heavy because you have been carrying things that weren't meant for you, that like other people meant it for harm, right? But just like um, Joseph's the one that said that when his brothers sold him into slavery in the Old Testament, he said, you meant this for harm and you meant to get rid of me because you couldn't stand the, you know, what he was carrying as, as a, um, he was anointed of God. And so you meant this for harm, but God meant it for good. And so when people try to put you down and, and keep you down, um, they mean it for harm to put all their shame on you in that moment. They're just using you as an opportune, it's an opportune moment for them to oppress someone else because they don't know that they don't have to carry all this shame themselves. And so if people think they have to carry the shame, they'll put it on other people. It's like, you carry this. It's like, no, you can give all of this up to God and you don't have to carry it and they don't have to carry it. Nobody, everybody gets a car. <laughs> like, that's a joke, You, if, if you've been around. I'm not trying to quote anybody um, uh, because there's there's a lot of, I won't go into that, but um, wow. 
There's this, there's Psalm 118, the Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. And this is in the Old Testament. So the word salvation in Hebrew is Yeshua. That's Jesus's name. Yah saves, Yah, God washes you clean. All right. And so it's like, the Lord is my strength and my song has become my, my Jesus, my Yeshua, my salvation. Yes. Um, and then it says, I shall not die, but live and declare the um i can't read my own cursive hold on the works since the word works I, it all blended together i shall declare i'm gonna clarify it the works of the lord wow okay um wow Okay, so this has to do with what we're talking about today. It says, the Lord has chastened me and corrected me, but he hath not given me over to death. Okay, so there's things in this world that will try to... Um, I'm thinking of a poetic way to say it for us. So like a picture. So I'm asking, I guess I'm asking by waiting in the silence for God to give me a picture for us. Oftentimes I get it in a song, right? And so um, I love that. I love teaching through songs. But okay, so this picture is like, One of the ways I was describing it was was like the movie Divergent. And I don't know if you've seen that or not, but you can understand how the narcissist operates and how the narcissist of this world uh, operates. And the way to get away from that, to move out of uh, being in the position of being oppressed by the narcissist or the narcissist system that's been around us in this world and maybe it's over by the time you're seeing this i don't know <laughs> i'm pretty hopeful but um if not it doesn't matter we we it's still important for us to to understand because there's going to be a lot of people needing to understand what was going on and what is going on and this new place and so okay In the movie Divergent, and I don't want to give all of it away because that's her story, the woman that wrote that. But basically, it's just like if we were doing a review, okay, is there is this uh, woman, young woman, and, and all of society is broken up into these different factions. And she takes the test and she is a little bit of all of these factions she thinks above like like i was talking about earlier on the on the top of the building she doesn't see things the first floor and so they give her all these tests and most people solve this this problem by doing it a certain way this programmed way and it shows how they're operating oh they're operating where they're more in their intellect or they're more selfless or they're more um um what was the faction that she was in for a while was like um daunt dauntless like just courageous and just goes for everything and is like yeah i'm going for it and so um and then the one the other group there was a real selfless group and then there was one group that's more very charitable always giving to other people in a different way and they never lie so they're always truthful and really charitable in a different way than the selfless people who are just like more drab and you know but but um there comes there's a little bit of a spoiler alert there comes this point where um the people that are in power don't want the people who are who are divergent who think above all of these factions they don't want them to to um to rise up and teach other people how to think above these models, how to have, yes, always be truthful. Yes, be daring. Yes, walk in power and authority. Okay. And that if you want to understand this biblically, if uh, you are a Christian, you understand it's Luke 10, 19. Jesus said, I give you authority to step on these scorpions and snakes 
and keep them under your feet. They're meant to be under your feet. You're meant to not be run by this system. But, um, and so if you're more intuitive, like that other gentleman on the other platform, you know, I understand what he's talking about and he understands what I'm talking about, even though we're describing it from two different ways. It's like, who am I to say that God isn't big enough to keep working on different people in different walks of life to reveal these truths and to eventually bring them, of course, like, I don't know when they get filled with the Holy Spirit and when they, they, um, you know, what they call it a come to Jesus moment, but not, not a come to Jesus, like, um, because there are many, it's, it's strange. There are many people that Jesus says this. Okay. So it's not that strange. He says it. Many people will call me Lord, Lord and do miracles in my name. And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. And so, um, in, in the book, mere Christianity, CS Lewis talks about how there are many people that are in even different faiths and God is working on them already. So we're not to judge by the external. Only God will know in the end. And um, even, even if you read, like I've quoted this before in other of my videos, like the Buddha had said, the Buddha means awakened one. And he says, don't follow me. The Christ is coming because he was 500 years or something before Christ. He's like, follow him. The God man will be here. And so there's writings that I've read. Um, now, I would love to actually go travel and see the original source and make sure it's verified and stuff like that. Um, but you can go study this yourself. But so let's go back to the words that were coming to me today, because I knew this today was going to be the day that I made this video for us. And so um, is it was sanctify them in thy truth. We don't have to go much further than that. Aletheia is the Greek word for truth. Aletheia. And so... Um, I've sent them in the world as you have sent me in the world. So I send them and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified in the truth. And so what, what does this mean to be sanctified? We know that Christ was sinless and that he is our righteousness. And so when we accept him and the Holy Spirit and dwells in us, I say it's like the heart fire emoji. You start going through this purification process. But what does that mean? It's like C.S. Lewis talks about in... I have it. I'm just going to, I'm not trying to sell the book. I don't get any money or anything, but in mere Christianity, he talks about how, you know, before we understood the, the chemical makeup of food, of the nutrients and the minerals and the vitamins and how this affects different parts of your bodies before we knew all of that scientifically, he's like, people would sit down and eat a meal and be refreshed. And so sometimes with theology, it's like the Holy Spirit can indwell in you and you ask God, forgive me all my sins, um, purify me, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And and it, he says in here too, and it's in the Bible, right? Not just C.S. Lewis, it's like that he will make us, he's making us into little Christs all over the world. There's like these lights that are turning on, right? And so it's like, um, I wrote what Blessed Theophylact says. He was an Archbishop Orthodox, Archbishop in the 1100s. And he says, we can be sanctified and acquire holiness only if we hold fast to the Orthodox doctrine. That was his understanding. Orthodox. You, it's so important that you understand this mystically. I hope, I hope the other videos have prepared you or God prepared you. I trust that God has prepared you for this video. So it'll make sense to you. Is the word uh, dox is like doxology, uh, teaching, I think. It's like, and um, anyway, orthodox means right teaching. And it doesn't have to mean I call myself orthodox because again, Jesus said people will do miracles and say, um, you know, 
do miracles in his name and he'll say i never knew you and so just because we put a label on us if we just say oh i'm baptist because my parents were baptist or whatever we say whatever denomination we say i'm catholic or orthodox or whatever it is it's just like no this is a personal relationship between you and the creator and Christ is the one that reconciled us to the creator by being our perfection for us and by showing us how to walk in this holiness. And so he will call you and start helping you to walk in this holiness. And so in that process, you get this um, renewing of your soul and hallowing, just like we say, hallowed, holy is your name, set apart. Your name is set apart from all other creation. Um, Notice, notice yourself, ask yourself and notice, look at things in your life. When you put God first, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, this right way of being. Not so that you can be in spiritual egotism and go, I did this right, you did that wrong. No, it's so that, so that you're not holding all this debt of guilt and shame, so that you're not holding this debt of, of other people and keeping your fists clenched and blocking the flow of love in your life. All of the ways of holiness turn you into this like light. You're, the, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And he said, I am the light of the world. And so let your light shine. And so it's like, this sanctification process needs to happen in you so that you can lighten up. You know, there's the like the BC Boys song. You gotta lighten up, gotta lighten up, gotta lighten up right now. Shine like the sun. Um, I love that song, you know. And so um, there's a verse I have on my desk, at my other desk, right, where it's Daniel 12. Um, one and three and it says um many of them that sleep in the dust in that time he was daniel was a prophet so he's speaking prophetically about a future time shall awaken and he said and those that lead many to righteousness will shine as the firmament firmaments in the heaven it says something like that i'm just remembering it from looking at it so much but you'll shine you you um you will be and that movie is just in one example of this and the matrix is another example of this now those movies aren't for every person god will show you in a different way when you read i ought to read jack and the beanstalk i think i had part of it already posted somewhere on my youtube channel but god was showing me this through jack and the beanstalk because the giant had come in and when the father of jack was asleep he took all of his stuff and he I don't know and asleep can be spiritually right and so all of the stuff in the giant's castle used to be his own father's house Jack's father and his mom was away with Jack as a baby visiting someone that was sick and helping them and so all of Jack's father and his other siblings were were taken out by the giant and all of the property was taken and so um, Jack lived by some kind of fate and then they were running out of money and when they were running out of money he sold the cow the one cow that they had for some the magic beans and then the beans he could climb up then Jack had the ability to climb up and face the dragon and take out the dragon I mean not the dragon it's like the dragon stories the giant who is like the dragon that fell from the sky that poses as an angel of light I often quote John 10, 10, Jesus said, um, he was saying to us, these high truths, understand these mystically. What I'm speaking to you is not, is, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. It's for like, you have a higher calling. Otherwise this wouldn't be coming to you. And so it said, um, he said, Jesus said, the thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. And that Greek word is, the word zoe and that means you're meant to go on this path of, of this heroic epic path where you are becoming the this shining light that he said you already are jesus is declaring over you this like prophetic words of of growth of heightened um awareness and 
capabilities and um, ways of seeing, okay? Even if, and I've done so many videos on um, the word metanoia, okay? Understand, that's the word for repentance. Normal people, most people, not most, like um, not, not a lot of the Orthodox actually that talk about Hezekiah and holiness and real metamorphosis it's the word okay so they mean they say it means like to turn back to to repent to turn the other direction and come back but it means a metamorphosis literally meta is like a metamorphosis a change of your n-o-u-s meta noia is another way to say n-o-u-s and um and so it's a transformation of your perception and of your ability to perceive these things so that you're not this programmed person okay so what i was going to say in divergent is there's this part where everybody is like walking like a robot they activate something and this is important for us to understand and and hopefully it our world will never come to a place like that but they activate something and everyone just turns into a robot and just follows the commands that are being projected into them but the divergent ones are like wait what's going on you know and they and and the main character knew enough not to act out of order to just walk along and so you'll see most of my videos are are kind of like that i'm teaching you how to be divergent but I, it looks like i'm just going along but i am definitely not going along but Nevertheless, and, um, you know, because when I said in the video I uploaded yesterday, and so this will be weeks out from that, it was on, um, I forgot what I named it, but it was, I think it was number 36. Yeah, it's number, it's session number 36. Um, I was saying, you're not meant to be a battery pack in the matrix. So that's another way is in the matrix, um, Neo, which is an, anagram for one the one o-n-e and neo and neo means new and so it's like you're meant to have this new understanding which is actually the ancient understanding that like noah had and um adam first had right until he fell into this lower nature and it it some of it over time the orthodox say over time it went away and we became more and more fallen but i don't know the the degree of what but um that's what i was going to say is don't you think if you think about this that that if there are evil people in power who come to steal kill and destroy that you know and you don't need to be paranoid at all because jesus says greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world and he came to give us life and so there's you're meant to step on these dragons and giants and scorpions under your feet that's where they go but and a lot of my videos talk about that even some of the one minute videos where i um kevin zeta is talking he talks about this a lot is they why would they want you to know the authority that you have in this world to not be programmed, to not be part of that system, that way of operating. They wouldn't want you to know this. And so part of doing the inner work, when people actually come in and sit on my couch and do therapy, it's like a lot of that is deprogramming the internal, the messages they got in childhood that say, oh, you need to carry our shame or you are worthless or you need to keep proving your worth or you need to do things this way because this is the way everyone tells you to operate. And if you don't, then you're not worth and blah, blah, blah. They try to tell you all these different things. And even the church, within the church, this is why probably why God speaks to me through pop songs because I couldn't listen. Even today, someone had sent me this thing to listen to and I care about this person so much. So I was like, I'll listen to it on the way to work. But the person speaking in the thing was going, and then the Lord said, and there's just this cadence. And I'm like, I can't deal with that cadence even. And I think that the person was saying amazing things, but it was like, um, and then why did John the Baptist, you know, and it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, and I don't, you know, everyone everyone is where they are and so it's important 
that if God wants to speak something through that, that I give grace to this person to be how they are, you know, and, and maybe there is something in, like, I like it when I have this, like, pray like a warrior prayer. It's like warrior prayers. I have it pinned on my TikTok. If you want to find it, it's going to, like, I plan to keep it there for a long time. When I put music behind it, then it was like, it does make it like, more this mystical feeling of what it was i was doing it for an assignment but also to pray to pray boldly and to teach us how to pray in that way because prayer unlocks all of these it's just it's like again i've used this before it's like if you have this plug okay and you're meant to be plugged into the creator to god god the father of our lord jesus christ and jesus christ was the bridge that reconciled us to a perfect God who demands justice. He was our righteousness for us. When you plug in, then all of this knowledge comes through you. And that was one other thing that I had left out in the video that I made last. So the video that comes before this, I, I had this whole plan to talk about and I got to wrap it up. And so I can say it this way is that, um, When you 100% say, God, I want you are the creator of all of the cosmos. Direct me in my life. Plug me into you. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Help me think on this higher level. Help me not be afraid to be diver divergent, to have other people around me mock me for standing up for what is true and what is right and what is just and for people for protecting real people from real evil. Help me do that. And one one way that you learn how to do this is to keep being, Jesus said, be like a little child. Now, that doesn't mean throw out your intellect. It means, you know, a child is trusting. And so be like a little child with God. I don't mean with other people. Jesus said, be as shrewd as a serpent, innocent as a dove. So don't harm other people, but be wise. Like they'll show you how, what they are like by their fruit. You will know how they operate. Are they operating in egotism and running after money and fame and likes and, you know, only around people that can make them feel more important in the moment? Or are they around, are they after sincerity and truth and, and are they artists? You know, we're all, the creator created us. So we are all artists in our own way. You don't have to be painting amazing paintings to be an artist. This is the art. If you listen to, I have a whole series now on, um, mysticism, studying the nature and development of your spiritual consciousness, and on um, abandonment to divine providence, and the George MacDonald books. All of those series of books that I was reading will help you walk through this art of knowing your real self, your real self, not your avatar personality self of this day, but your real self. And so how God was showing me this the other day was it was too hot to skate outside. And so I went to the skating rink in the morning before I came to work. One of these, the, the day that this is, I won't say what day. And there was this guy that asked me to, to couple skate with him. And I'm like, sure, you know, and I was praying. So I was in this meditative state, but it's just when he held my hand and directed me, he's like, this is just an invitation to go this way. You don't have to, if you don't want to. And I'd never heard someone explain it to me that way. And the Holy Spirit was speaking to me at the same time. And it's like, this is how God will lead each of us. Our soul is like a woman. And so Christ is like the bridegroom of, um, he's the groom of us. So we're married to Christ as you become a Christian. I highly, highly recommend Lee Strobel's movie, the movie, The Case for Christ, about his story. It was so good. It was, I cried my eyes out at the end, bawled my eyes out. But God was showing me and, um, that, you know, you just keep letting God lead. And we're so not used to doing that in our world. It's like, especially in the West, we're more controlling and we try to control everything. And in the East, it's more collective and there's family stuff. But um, anyway, don't follow your family if they're leading you away from what Christ is teaching you in truth and into more programming and egotism. But on roller skates, it was even easier to follow him because I just skated around. And so God was showing me and I have to wrap this up because I have another obligation, but it's like, just be like you're on skates and keep asking God, lead, guide, and direct me. Um, John 16, 13, I think, is the Holy Spirit will come and will lead, guide, and direct you into all truth and show you things to come. It says this in the Bible. 
Like maybe 75 or 80% of Christians don't know that the, the power that they have as Christians because it's even suppressed within the church. So you're not, they try to keep it so you don't know this power that you can walk in now that Christ is in you. All right, so I wish you so much love and ask questions and watch my other sessions with Dr. Cheryl because I'm talking all about this. I wish you much love.